This is how we gonna do it. Start! This is the end point guys. Stop! Good morning mga ka master. This is Master Arwin at your service. If you are a farmer who's particularly engaging in rice production, or you are working in an irrigation related agency like the National Irrigation Administration, or you are an agriculture student who wants to learn knowledge and skills about agriculture, this video is for you. Our topic for this video is about to determine the water discharge of our irrigation canal. Pero bago tayo magsimula, kung ngayon lang tayo napadpad sa channel na ito, please like and share this video. And subscribe na din sa channel na ito at huwag kalimutang pindutin ang bell notification button para updated kayo sa mga sumusunod ko pa video. So ngayon, let's start. Alam natin kung gaano kahalaga ang tubig para sa ating mga pananim. Pero alam niyo ba kung gaano karami ang dumadaloy na tubig sa ating irigasyon? Sa loob ng isang oras o isang araw? Kung hindi niyo alam yan, yan yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon dito. So ngayon, pupunta tayo sa isang irigasyon dito malapit sa ating paralan. And we will determine the velocity, the area, and the discharge of our water on that particular irrigation canal. Ngayon guys, pupuntahan natin yung irrigation malapit ito sa ating area. So tara, samahan niyo ako. Let's go! First thing that we will prepare is this meter stick. So we will need this to measure the, the length and the width of our irrigation canal. The next thing to prepare is the, the float material. So we, have, we should have three different float material. One is the uh, tightly closed water bottle. The next one is the styrofoam. And the third one, we will use this cup of the bottle. So we will use different materials so that we will uh, get the average in order to know uh, what is really the velocity of our water. Since these materials have different density and different velocity. So we will try these three different materials and we will have the average of these three. So we will start. Okay guys, so we will start with our uh, measurement of the discharge of this canal. The first thing to do is you will measure a 10 meter distance along this irrigation canal. So from here, this will serve as our end point for this canal. So. We will use this marker to mark the final or the end point of our examination or our trial. So this is the end point since this is the lower part of the irrigation. So the water is moving this way. So this will be our end point. So we will measure from the end point 10 meters up to the initial point. So we will use this meter stick. To measure 10 meters or another you can use um, meter tape or tape measure so the the longer one so that uh, it's easy for you to measure the 10 meter distance but now uh, in our case we will use this meter stick so this is how you will do it so 10 meter distance so one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then ten meters. Okay, so 
This is the 10 meter distance. So we will use this marker to mark as the initial point of our trial. Okay, so this will be the initial point. So we will put this floating material from the initial point and then we will record the time it travels until it reaches to the final point which is a 10 meter distance so that's how we will determine the velocity of our water okay so we will start take note that we have three different floating materials okay each material should have five trials or five replications so that later on we will have this average uh, in order for us to determine uh, really the velocity of this water so to start we will have this cell phone so we will use this as a timer so we will have to record the time once we will put this floating material until it reaches to the end point okay so we will record the time uh, how long does it travel and from the initial point to the final point okay so we will start once now we will put this material in the uh, surface water we will now start recording the time okay so this is how we gonna do it start this is the end point guys stop so for the second floating material we have this closely tight water bottle so the same process guys we have five trials for this floating material so once now we will put this floating material we will start the timer okay so one two and three Okay, stop. Okay guys, we are now in the third floating material. So our third floating material will be the cup of a bottle. So the same process, we have five trials for this floating material. So once I put this in the water surface, we will start recording the time. Okay, so one, two, and three. Start. Stop. Okay guys, so we will determine also uh, the area. Okay, the area, the cross-sectional area of this irrigation canal. So the shape of this irrigation canal is an inverted trapezoid, which is um, longer, an upper base, and then shorter is the lower base. So we will compute for the trapezoid, the area of trapezoid. So first, we will determine the width of this irrigation canal using a meter stick. So since this canal is a very long canal, so I will swim in this area. No, but I will estimate. So take note that in the length, you will not measure the upper part. So only you will measure where is the level of the water. So that's the width of the water or the canal okay so one two this is 2.5 okay 2.5 meters next we will determine the base of the canal okay the width of the of the lower base of the canal so this is about two meters okay so the upper base is 2.5 meters and the lower base is two meters Next, we will determine the height of the water. Okay, so the height of the water. So this is 60 centimeters. One, two, three, start. So, guys, please take note that we have this initial and final and... Um, so, guys, please take note that we have this initial and end point. So, we will determine the cross-sectional area of the initial and the final point so in this condition this canal is an straight canal which means that the cross-sectional area of the initial and the end point is more or less the same so 
In this condition, we have the same cross-sectional area. If in case in your area has different um, measurement, so you will have to get the average of the two. So the cross-sectional area of the initial and the cross-sectional of the endpoint. So you will have to get the average of that two measurement. Okay? Okay? So, now, we will compute the discharge of the water and the velocity of the water in the laboratory. So, we will have uh, the computation or the process, step-by-step -step process in computing the velocity and the discharge of water. So, okay guys, so, um, let's go. One hour later. So, ayun guys, tapos na tayo sa ating trial dun sa irrigation canal. So, ngayon, um, we will have our computations. But before that, this is the table that we will be using in computation. So, we will focus first on the flo first floating material, which is the styrofoam. Okay? And then, we will also focus on the first trial. So, the first trial. We have five trials kasi. One, two, three, four, five. And we have the mean. So, 10 meters are the distance of our trial, which is from the initial point to the final point. So, it measured 10 meters. This 30 seconds, it is the time uh, wherein the floating material or the styrofoam move along this 10 meters. So, from the initial to the final. So, it has this 30 seconds travel. So, now we will determine the velocity of the floating material. So, it should be in the meter per second. So, how to compute this one? So, this is the formula of velocity. Velocity is equal to uh, meter or distance distance over time. Okay? So, distance is 10 meters divided by the time which is uh, 30 seconds. 10 meters and 30 seconds. 10 divided by 30, that, uh, that's about 0.33. The unit is meter per second. So this is now the velocity. So we will put this on the column. So 0 0.33. So uh, uh, we don't need to the right to write the unit because it is written here. Okay. So the next thing to do is um, we will compute for the initial. For the initial point or the area of the initial point. So in our case, there are two types of, or I mean there are a lot of design for our irrigation. What we have in our trial is the trapezoidal form of irrigation. So it is in this form. So we have four sides. So how to get the area of our trapezoids? Okay, so we will have this base 1, the base 1, the base 2, and then the, we will get the height, the height of the canal. So, uh, base, base 1 is the base, the lower base of our canal. And the base 2 is not the upper base of our canal, but the levels of water. So, if your water is didila, uh, dito lang yung, ano, yung level ng water, so that's the base 2. Okay, so what is the formula of our uh, trapezoid for the area of trapezoid? So this is the formula. So area of trapezoid is equal to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times height. Okay, so that's the formula. Okay, so we will compute for the area of trapezoid. Base 1 uh, based on our trial, we have we get two um, two meters. Okay, the base one is two meter, two meters. Uh, then the base two is two point five meters divided by two times the h is we have zero point six based on our trial or based on our measurement. So zero point six 
meters. Okay? 2, uh, 2 meters plus 2.5 is 4.5 meters. So, uh, the same unit because it is addition. Divided by 2 times 0, 0 0.6 meters. So, 4.5 divided by 2, that's what, that would be 2 point. 2.25 meters times 0 0.6 meters that would be 1.35 meters squared so this is the initial uh, the area of our initial point okay so now we will proceed in computing the final point since our irrigation canal is a straight canal, so straight canal, which means that the initial point and the final point, their area are the same. So because they have the same dimension, which is uh, 2 meters at base 1, base 2 is also 2.5 meters, then 0 0.6 is the depth of the water. So that means the initial, the area of our initial point is the same as the area of our final point. So here, we will put this 1.35. So meter squared. So meter squared. Don't need to write to uh, the, the unit. Okay, so because it is already written here. So since they have the same um, area so we will copy the same area so which is 135 uh, 1.35 I mean okay so now we will get the average of this initial and final point okay how to get the average so it goes like this um, you will add the two and then divided by 2 which is because they are 2 items so 1.35 plus 1.35 is uh, divided by 2 okay the answer is 0 um, 7 and 2 or 2.70 divided by 2 the answer is 1.35 Okay, so 1.35. So because they are the same. So the answer is 1.35. Pero guys, yung area ng ating irrigation canal ay nagdepende lang yan kung ano yung form ng ating irrigation canal. Okay, so for example, your canal is a rectangular or a square. So uh, we will use different or uh, different formula of that. Okay, so for example, if your area is square or rectangle, first you should determine the width of your irrigation canal. Width is yung gaan kalapad yung ating canal. Another is depth. Depth is yung gaan kalalim yung ating tubig. Okay, so for example, your canal, we have 2 meters. 2 meters yung ano? Yung lapad niya, okay? And then, yung depth ng ating water, so for example, 0 0.5 meters lang. Okay, 0 0.5 meters. So, we will use um, different formula. So, how to determine uh, the area of a square or a rectangle? So, it, it goes like this. Area is equal to um, um, the width times the depth. Okay, so the width is... 2 meters times 0 0.5 meters, the answer is 1 meter squared. So that's the area of your um, irrigation canal. It's either on the initial or in the final point. But initial and final point is not always the same. Um, for, say for example, your canal is an irregular canal. Magkaiba yung dimension ng initial at ng final point so and then kung magkaiba sila guys you should get the average of this too so ito yung gagamitin natin sa pag 
determine natin dito sa ating water discharge. Okay? So, ngayon, um, so this is now our average cross-sectional area. So, we will get the discharge of our canal. Okay, paano ba? So, take note that the unit is cubic meter per second. So, we will multiply the velocity and the cross-sectional area. Okay? So, this is how it is computed. So, 0 0.33 times 1.35 so so 0 0.33 this is meter per second and then 1.35 this is um, meter square so 0 0.33 times 1.35 that is 0 0.4455 meter cube per second So, this is the discharge of our irrigation canal. The discharge of our irrigation canal in one second is 0.4455 cubic meter. So, we will write this one here. 0.4455 canal. Okay, so we will not uh, run round off first here since this is not the final answer. So we can round out, round out here in the final answer. So now we will. So this is the uh, per second, okay, cubic meter per second. How about if for one day, how much water does this irrigation discharge, uh, discharging water for one day? So we will compute or convert this. Um, second into day. So how to compute that one? So we have a long process for this. Okay. So um, we have 0.4455 meter cube per one second. Okay, one second. We will convert this second into a day. Well, how to do this? So you should have this um, ratio. Okay? So in a, in a 60, or I mean in a, in a one minute, we have 60 seconds. Okay? So we will convert this first into minute, into hour, and into a day. Okay? So another in one Oh, I mean, in 60 minutes, you will have one hour. Okay, one hour. And then, in 24 hours, you have one day. Okay? So, our final answer would be in terms of day. So, what you are going to do now is, um, you should multiply the numerator and then also the denominator. Okay? One times one times one times one. If you have calculator, one times one, times one, times one. So this is one, okay? Another is the denominator. But first, uh, we will cancel out the second because um, they are in the numerator and denominator, so we can cancel out. And then the minute, cancel, the R and the R will cancel, cancel. So, the remaining unit is only the day. Okay, so, one day. Okay, one day. So, 60 times 60 is 3,600 times 24. So, please compute that, guys. The answer is 86,400. So, 86,400. Okay, so... 86,400 and then you will divide 1 divided by 86,400 so the answer is 0.0000011754 day okay so the next thing to do is 
So we will erase this one next. Okay, so we will erase, erase this one. So the denominator now is zero point zero 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 one one seven five four D. Okay, so. Hindi na second yung denominator natin ngayon. Day na siya kasi kinaconvert na natin siya. So, what's the answer? We will uh, divide 0.4455 cubic meter divided by this number. So, the answer is 38,491.94634 or uh, we will run off guys uh, so uh, at least two decimal point okay so uh, 38,491 point so round up it would be 95 the unit would be cubic meter per day so this is now the water discharge of our irrigation canal per day so we will write this one here So zero. Uh, I mean, so thirty-eight thousand four hundred ninety-one point ninety-five. So this is uh, the discharge per day. Okay. So guys, this is only for trial one. So we will solve for the trial two, three, four, and five, and then we will get the mean. Okay, guys. Uh, if you have your trial, you can also compute uh, the rest of the trials and then follow the process. Okay, so uh, I will answer uh, every trial and we will get the mean later. Okay. One hour later. So, guys, these are all the data for all the five trials of our first floating material, which is the styrofoam. Now we will get the mean for this data. Supposedly, we will only get the mean for the discharge of our water. However, to check this one, if this is correct, the mean for the discharge of water, we will also get the mean for the distance, time, velocity, initial point area, the final point area, and the processional area. So that we can check if the uh, the mean for the discharge of water is correct. Okay, so now we will get all the means for the data. So for the distance, uh, we have this similar. I mean, we have similar distance, which is the 10 meters. So 10. How to get the mean? Okay, or the average I mean, average or mean. Okay, so we will have this. Um, uh, you add all the items or so all the numbers. So ten plus ten plus ten plus ten plus ten. So one, two, three, four, and five. So that would be fifty uh, divided by the number of items. We have five items. One, two, three, four, and five. So divided by five, the answer is ten. So the same lang. So this is 10, and then the same process. Uh, how to get the mean or the average is to add all the items. How many items? For example, all the numbers, then divided by the items. So for example, uh, you add all the numbers. That's 15, and then the items is 5. So it would be divided by 5. So here you add all the numbers divided by 5. So we will have this answer. So you will get 29.8. Uh, here for the velocity, you will get 0.332. And then for the initial point, you will have the same number. Okay, so since they are the same number, so we will have 1.35. Then 1.35. Here the same 1.35, and then 
for the discharge, we will add all the numbers, then divide it by 5. So we can get the 0 0.4626. And also here, you will add all the numbers, then divide it by 5. So we can get 39969.096. Okay, so 0 0.096. So this is the means for all the data. So now for the styrofoam trial, we have Mm, the result of our water discharge. So this means that in a one day, our water flow or the discharge of our water in that particular canal is 39,969.096. Pero we have two more um, floating materials to be. Um, computed and then these three different floating materials uh, we will get the average or the mean for that so uh, we will compute again for the other two the tightly closed water bottle and then the uh, cup of the bottle so uh, let us proceed and we will get the mean or the average of the three so that we can get the final um, discharge of water of our irrigation canal. Okay, so let's answer. Two thousand years later. So, guys, this is all the means for our three different floating materials. Okay, so I I solved from I solved it on my own. Uh, the five trials of the bottle and then the five trials for the cup and then I get the mean for the for each of the um, floating materials so this is all the means of the three floating materials now we will get the overall mean for these three floating materials so the same process guys um, all, add all the numbers and then divide the number of items. Here we have three items. One, two, three for the styrofoam, bottle, and the cup. So we will add, so for example, 10 plus 10 plus 10 is equal to 30 divided by 3 since 3 is the item number 1, 2, and 3. So divided by 3, that would be 10. So this is 10. So for the time, we will have this 29.33, okay? And then for the velocity, velocity is the speed, okay? So the meter in a travel per unit time, okay? So here for the velocity, we have computed for the mean a 0 0.33. Nine seven, and then for the initial area, so the same process, so the same number lang divided by three is we will get the same number. So one point thirty five, one point thirty five, then one point thirty five. So here, guys, take note that the for the discharge it will be velocity times the average cross-sectional area not here but the average okay nagkataon lang na parehas yung ano yung ating area no? of initial and the final um, point that's why we have also the same average but if you have different initial and final and then for computing the discharge you will use the average cross-sectional area not this one okay so I hope that's clear. And then we have to get the mean for this. So we will get 0 0.4634. And then for the discharge for the cubic meter per day, we will have this 40,035. Okay, so 
for the overall trial. Okay, so this is what we have. So we concluded that the water discharge of the particular irrigation canal that we have uh, conducted our trial and the uh, uh, discharge is per per day is 40,000 and 35.202 cubic meter of water per day so um, that's the water that you discharge in that particular irrigation well, guys, so I hope that this activity helps you in determining the velocity and the discharge of your irrigation system going to your cropland or agricultural land so um, thank you for watching the video and please like comment and subscribe on this channel and see you on my next videos thank you